everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. I am film critic Rachel Wagner, and I'm very excited today to be talking to a new actor that's working for Hallmark in a new series. And we're talking with actress Sarah Lind. And Sarah, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So what we like to do is we like to ask our guests to introduce yourself and tell us what inspired you to get into acting. So... Yeah, my name's Sarah Lind. Um, I've been acting since I was 10 years old, and it's a little bit hard to say what inspired me to begin with because um, it was actually my parents' idea that I go for my first audition. Mm -hmm. Um, But before then, I think I was just really dramatic and theatrical and always putting on performances, and they were like, why don't you go go try and do this in front of an actual audience? So they saw uh, an advertisement for an audition um, for Cat on a Hot Tin Roof that was being produced in Calgary, Canada. Uh And I got it, and I just kept acting. So you started out uh, doing work on the stage? Doing plays? I did. um, That's pretty much the only work I've done in the theater since, unfortunately. Oh, really? Yeah, I would love to do that. Or I think I would anyway. So as a as a little girl, you started doing uh, television, or yeah, yeah. It started with television, um, and then moved into independent features. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was doing that play, um, I I was a kid, so I had to have a chaperone. So my mom came with me to the rehearsals, and the other actors in the play convinced her to become a talent agent because. Um, they thought Calgary could use another one. So she became my agent. And then I started going out on, you know, film and television uh, auditions. And yeah, it's sort of like when you're, when you're a kid, there's not a lot of um, competition, you know, Mm -hmm. so it's a great way to really build a resume and get a lot of experience. So did you uh, homeschool or did did you go to regular school or? I went to regular school. Um, the The schedules usually worked out that I was working mostly during my summer vacation. Um, mm. And then if I was ever on a job during school, then uh, they provide uh, classes on set. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't do a whole lot of that, honestly. So That's cool. So that worked out pretty well then. All right. Did yeah, you, you had to- for me, I don't know about my parents, but, but I thought it was all pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, did you have any particular memorable uh, roles or, or filming that uh, when you were first starting that really sticks out? Um, when I first started, um, I mean, I got to learn to ride a horse for one show. Um, which was great and was, uh, I mean, I've ridden a horse like two times since then, but for one whole summer I got to take horse riding lessons, which was really unusual for me. Uh, I didn't grow up in big cities, but I was never like in the country or on a farm Mm -hmm. or around horses. So that was, it was lovely. Um, uh, there, there's actually one memory I had, uh, or, or one memory I could share. Um, it wasn't when I was young. Uh, I was probably about 30. But I auditioned for a a show that was being directed by Jason Priestley, and it was starring Luke Perry. And Mm. when I was young, I had, I mean, I had crushes on like every boy back then, but I certainly had crushes on like those two on Beverly Hills. So I went to this audition and so I walked. Walk, I was sitting in the room waiting, and then in walk Brendan and Dylan, and they both <laughs> said hi to me before I even said hi to them, and they knew my name, and I was like, I, I just achieved a 10-year-old dream here. Like, I, could not, I couldn't believe it. It was, it was such, a great, such a great moment. Sarah, we're so happy to meet you, and I'm just like, if I was 10 years old, I would be crying on the floor right now, but... <laughs> You're like, I'm a puddle on the ground. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's great. Like by now, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, cool. This is so nice. But there was a time where I would have, I would have had a meltdown. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. funny. <laughs> uh, on your IMDb, you had some unusual trivia 
listed. Uh, and so it said that you are an amateur claw hammer style banjo player. It said, is that right? So, yeah, well, so when that, when I, I think I posted that when I was like 20. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I've tried to take it down, but they won't let me take it down. So all that trivia or... I haven't checked it in a while, but I posted some fairly peculiar things. At the time, yes, I was taking lessons. And I I think amateur is a little bit generous for the skill level I got to. But yeah, I did really really play the banjo. (laughs) I don't even know what that is, a claw hammer style banjo. Um, heard of that. Well, it probably sounds more colorful than it really, <laughs> really is. <laughs> uh, it's just like a strum, strumming style. Um, so, like, uh, I, I might even have this uh, not quite right. So, um, forgive me if there are any banjo pros out there listening to this. But um, a lot of bluegrass is, is finger picking. So, you use, like, several fingers to, to sort of pick. And then the claw hammer is just... You kind of just strum down, and then uh, you, you don't strum. You don't play, and you kind of just use your thumb and your index finger, so it sort of looks like a claw. And then uh-huh. and you're hammering down instead of just plucking up. Yeah. So anyway. Are you are you big into uh, bluesgrass music, or is uh, it just kind of random? Uh, a little bit. I think I was really excited about um, like old time and Appalachian music around that time. I still like it, but it's been a while since I you know, listen to it constantly. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I really like that kind of high lonesome sound. And yeah, I thought it was pretty, pretty captivating. Mm. Okay. Well, uh, it, it also said on there that you have a taxidermy collection. Is that still not, is that not a thing anymore? Or is that on there? Um, I, I, yeah. It's not a thing anymore. Um, I, I've given my taxidermy pieces away, um, <laughs> but just recently um, I was I, I, I cleared out a storage locker and came across all these things that I had forgotten about. And I had one box that was full of um, an, a, animal skulls that I was collecting mm-hmm. from around that time. And it was sort of nice to see them. And I put them on my desk trying to figure out what to do with them and then thought, you know, I'll, I'll sell them or give them away, sort of put, put a word out to anyone who might be interested. And my partner and I have a little dog. And we went out for lunch. And when we came back, she had eaten all the skulls. What? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's funny. I know, and I sort of like I thought it was crazy, and then I was like, "Dogs and bones, I guess." I yeah, mean, it I makes so. sense. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have no, I have no bones, I have no taxidermy. <laughs> uh, so I, I felt like in your, uh, in your resume on IMDb in your in your um, filmography I should say you've done a number of horror type of projects and I was wondering what that is like to do like the scary uh movies like I've seen the severed and some of these kind of yeah. type shows and I was just wondering what that's like well it's funny because it's I'm I, I like scary movies horror mm-hmm. films uh, I like them, quite well, but they also like scare me terribly. So I don't <laughs> understand why it is that I like keep doing that to myself, but uh-huh. but I do. Um, but it's when you're making them, it's not scary. Like on set, it it just feels I don't know, kind of kind of no different than any other acting. There's like mm-hmm. goop on your face, covered in like sticky blood or you're just running screaming and it's just acting it's not mm-hmm. it's not scary but and if i watch them then <laughs> like i can't watch them scary. yeah i'm it's hard to get in that like mo that headspace of like i'm scared uh this person's gonna murder me kind of headspace <laughs> um i i i, I don't want to like incriminate myself but i find it pretty easy because if you're just like running and screaming, then you're running and 
screaming, you know, like whether you're actually yeah. scared. Like it's like if you have to cry or 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 do something really specific um, to affect another character, that's one thing. But if you're just reacting and jumping and you know yelping, it's I, I find it pretty easy. Like those can be physically exhausting or fatiguing days, but. But in, in other ways, they're 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 fairly simple in in my experience. Interesting, cool. Yeah. Uh, so you were on a show called Edgemont for four mm. seasons, four years. It looks like. Um, and yeah. uh, and so, what was that like? What was that? Is that that's a high school show? It looked like. Yeah, it's a high school show. Um, no adults in it, or no adult characters. Mm-hmm. Um, I was, I think I did that from when I was 17 to 20 or so, 21 or something like mm-hmm. that. Um, it was a very large ensemble cast and, um, we, we, we would block shoot that. So mm-hmm. with that, are you familiar with block shooting? Uh, yeah. so, sounds, so yeah. we block shoot. So we, we'd shoot like five episodes at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it, we do one week in the cafeteria, one week in the sort of hall area, one week in someone's house or whatever like that. Um, and, and, and it also means that you, I, th- I think we do one season in two months or something like that. So it's quite quick. Um, and we all got really close. Everyone seemed to get along really well. And I'm not in touch with everyone but um yeah it was just really good people and it's really nice to see how many of them have gone on to have really interesting careers including the writers and some of the directors like they they, they pop up a lot and, I, and i'm sure in a lot of hallmark shows as well mm-hmm. because a lot of hallmark shows are filmed in vancouver and that right was a, you know a pretty large swath of the young vancouver talent at that time cool So I'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. They're good folks over at Care Of. And right now you can get 50% off your first order at Care Of. Go to TakeCareOf.com, enter code Hallmarkies50. And what Care Of does, it's a really great thing, especially for this time of the year, where everybody is making resolutions, everyone's trying to be healthier. And what they do is they provide vitamins, protein powders, and other products that come straight to your door. So it's easy and uh, it's really customized. You can go in, you can take a quiz, uh, and the quiz will help you to fail to figure out what is most important for you, whether it's something to help your fitness routine, whether it's something to help your sleeping, your stress, uh, whatever it might be. And uh, it, it was very helpful. I got the chance to, to do the quiz, and I've had two different packages from Care Of, and I've really found it helpful. They have a great attention to detail uh, where everything has your name on it. Everything is really, tr- they really try to make it custom for you, which I think is really important. They also have a very high focus on quality. They have science and research that goes into all their products. Uh, they Their protein powders, which are some of the best. Uh, They have real ingredients like organic cocoa and pink Himalayan sea salt. So right now, you get 50% off your first care of order. Go to takecareof.com, enter code Hallmarkies50. So you, what's it like if you get to be in a a bigger like feature film, like you were on uh, the assassination of Jesse James uh, compared to like a TV movie? Um, well, it's interesting. The, the part that I had in assassination of Jesse James was, was really small. Um, Mm -hmm. but it was, it's probably, I I mean, it, it, it is, it must be the, the biggest budget project I've ever been part of. Mm -hmm. And even though I was only in one scene and, you know, it was, it was really quick. The, the amount of time they're able to spend with a budget like that, they were able to pay tail and take so much time to get absolutely every aspect of it perfect, mm-hmm. um, which was really it was very impressive. It was it was kind of wild to see. Um, mm-hmm. Now, I, I mean, well, not now, but th- throughout my career, you know, TV movies and things are 
you usually have like three, three and a half weeks to shoot them, mm-hmm. um, which doesn't feel too quick, but it's also not like, oh, we're going to spend an entire day making sure that the snow looks exactly right mm-hmm. on the, these branches or something like that, you know? Right. Um, and so if I, were to, if I were to be on a on a show that moved at that pace, I think I'd lose my mind. Like I'm just used to, it's just like, you go, you go, you go. You, you're, you're working the whole time and having a lot of downtime, I think would be really exhausting. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's the, that's the main yeah. thing I noticed. The amount of time and, uh, and of course resources. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, so you are making your Hallmark debut. Is that right? With yeah, uh, this, yeah, this yeah. new movie, uh, Martha's Vineyard yeah. Mysteries, A Beautiful Place to Die. And this is the basically like a pilot kind of to this new you know, mystery shows. Uh, and why don't you tell us a little bit about the, about the setup of the series and the, and the movie coming up uh, on Sunday? Yeah, so um, it obviously takes place in Martha's Vineyard. Um, the The lead hero is Jesse Metcalf, who obviously everyone is really familiar with already. Um, he plays uh, an ex-detective, um, homicide detective from the big city who's retired and come back to Martha's Vineyard. Um, while he's there there's a murder, which is something that happens almost never in Martha's Vineyard. He gets roped into um, helping solve the murder by the chief of police, who is my character's dad. Um, my character, Z, is a, is a doctor, and the um, medical examiner for the time being while the current medical examiner is on leave. So the three of us go about trying to solve the mystery of this murder. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty unusual for Hallmark to have a male-led movie, uh, let alone a series. Usually, there's there are female-led, so that's interesting. And it kind of made me wonder if they are going to use your character uh, quite a bit to kind of uh, kind of fill have sort of the female presence for their audience. Yeah, the two, the two of us work together pretty much as like partners solving uh-huh. crimes. Um, I'm able to use my um, my medical experience to find clues, and he of course uses his detective skills. But as you see, that you know, Z is pretty smart and is able to trust her intuition and pick up on things herself too. Um, you also find that they happened. To to know each other in high school and so there's a there's a long lost sort of flame between the two of them that's being mm. rekindled um, <laughs> as they work together that sounds fun <laughs> yeah uh so really fun. did you f- film this in vancouver or where where did you film where did you film it we filmed it we filmed it in victoria which is on okay. vancouver island yeah cool where are you based I'm in Utah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, so not not too too far. Um and uh uh have, have, do you like a, a good mystery show? Is that something that uh was was fun for you to be a part of? It was fun. Um I I do like mysteries. I am trying to watch less true crime and more mm-hmm. like yeah, yeah. scripted fictional mysteries. <laughs> So, you know, there, there's no actual body count with my right. entertainment. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do. I like mysteries quite a bit. Um, yeah, there, there's a, a book, a novella that I quite like that um, I'm hoping to get the rights to to turn into a movie. Um, we'll see how that goes. And it's a mystery. Well, that's cool. So do you do, uh, are you, do you write is that something you or something you want to get into is adapting and doing screenplays and that kind of thing or i like i would love to do more of that yeah and take more of a um, i'd like to take more of a role in sort of the overall project and in storytelling Mm -hmm. um more than just on the acting side cool 
That's good. Uh, so uh, what do you think that is uh, going to be especially memorable about this series, about the Martha's Vineyard series that people are going to like? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's a little bit grittier uh-huh. um, than some of the other mysteries. It's a little, a little bit darker. Um, nothing, nothing too drastically different, but um, I think that'll be a fun sort of new, mm-hmm. new aspect. Um, also, the, the the chemistry between Jeff and Z um, is really, really fun. They're very bantery. Um, they're always kind of needling each other in a really mm-hmm. fun way. Um, the setting's beautiful. I think I, I think the whole show will just really stand out from top to bottom that's cool was it fun to work with jesse yeah he's a lot of fun we mm-hmm. we shared a sense of humor or so so you know if you can see from before action to after cut the 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 the, the take might be really serious but then we're often goofing around yeah before and after <laughs> that's cool yeah. very good <laughs> Well, we're yeah. excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so we have we like to end our interviews with some fun questions. This question is, what is the best ice cream flavor? I don't like ice cream. Don't like ice cream. Any flavor, <laughs> huh? <laughs> wow. That is controversial. No, I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> I know. I know. We just jumped right into the fire. <laughs> Even like sherbet or frozen yogurt or anything. Nothing like that, huh? I like those even less. Less? <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I like Okay, good. Okay. Hopefully this less controversial. What is your favorite color? <laughs> um probably really bright red oh good that's very on brand for homer yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> um okay what music are you into right now um i, I seem to just listen to the same music all the time which is like 50s and 60s music i really like bo diddley and girl groups and doo-wop um i'm listening to oh my partner and i went to see um like a live cast of an opera a few uh-uh. weeks ago and yeah uh, yeah i've been listening to a little bit more the, the opera was uh by philip glass so i'm trying to oh pick up more philip glass to listen to so like a contemporary uh, opera yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. cool that's cool. Uh, okay. Uh, what is your go-to date night food? Well, we just moved to Koreatown, so now it's Korean barbecue. Oh, yum. Do you like it spicy? Yeah. I like it spicy. I really like garlic, and I, I like, I'm in love with kimchi, so, you know. There's no way to go wrong with Korea yeah. barbecue. <laughs> cool. Good. Okay. What is your go-to date night activity? Sounds like you guys do fun stuff. Um, we watch a lot of movies. Um, uh, okay. One of our first dates, we went to Korean barbecue. <laughs> and in the, the restaurant, uh, sort of, in, in, the, in the back in a separate room was an arcade so we went and played pinball and had um korean barbecue and that was really really fun so we've yeah. done that a couple times pinball and barbecue <laughs> that sounds fun um okay uh are you uh dogs or cats i'm gonna cover my dog's ears she's in my lap right now and so oh. cats. <laughs> We'll keep it between us. <laughs> okay, um, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so beaches or mountains? Beaches. 
<laughs> Me too. <laughs> I love being at the beach. Um, okay. Would you rather be in a fan? Oh, you're in the wrong basin. I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> uh, would you rather be in a fancy dress or in sweats? <laughs> oh, I, uh, most of the time sweats, but I need both. Yeah. Balance every, it out. Every once in a while, I need to, yeah, I really need to dress it up once in a while. <laughs> so, so what's your favorite holiday to like celebrate? Um, I'm going to go with New Year's. Oh, what do you like about New Year's? <laughs> Um, I like that it's reflective. Um, this year, for the first time in years, uh, we went out for New Year's, which was fun. Um, but I really like it as a sort of quiet at home, just the family kind of kind of nice. Yeah. Eat, eat some nice food. There are fireworks. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just think it's um, one of the one of the quieter, more low key. Um, or at least that's how I like to spend it quieter and low key. Mm-hmm. Cool. Very good answer. Um, well, so you can pick your own movie. Don't, don't feel bad, but what is your favorite okay. Hallmark movie? Cause I know you live in Canada, you don't have Hallmark channel, but, but nevertheless, <laughs> I like to ask. <laughs> um, okay. It's not a movie. But I really love Chesapeake Shores. Oh, okay, good. What What do you like about Chesapeake Shores? Yeah. I love the family dynamics. I love mm-hmm. the romance in it. Um, and also, a few of my friends are on it. Um, Megan Ori and I did a TV show together years ago, and mm-hmm. uh, and actually Amelia Olerup mm-hmm. too. So we're friends, and I just love watching them work. Cool. And of course, Jesse's in it. Um, yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, I knew him from Chesapeake <laughs> Shores before I knew him. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, very good. You passed the test. <laughs> oh, good. Yay. <laughs> I was really nervous. <laughs> Well, no, you did very well, and we really appreciate you coming on talking with us, and we're excited for the new movie. Uh, we'll watch it uh, this weekend, and uh, and hope it hope it does very well. And uh, do you have social Thank media you. that you'd like to share with with any or anything? Uh, like yeah, that? Um, you can follow me on Instagram at official Sarah Lind. Okay, great. I'll put a link in the description section so people can do that. So thanks so much for coming on talking with us. I really appreciate it. It really was fun. And um, thank you for, for doing this. I really hope you enjoy it. Yeah, it'll be really good. So let us know if you're listening, what you thought of, of what we had to, to talk about. And, uh, and I hope you have a really great day. Thank you. You too. Okay. Bye. I'd like to thank Sarah for coming on the podcast. Please make sure you're following her on all our social medias. And uh, it was a lot of fun to get to talk to her. Let us know what you think. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of her social media, iTunes, YouTube, everywhere. And uh, please follow the podcast, the Homework is Pod, the Homework is Podcast, all of her social media. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. If you're listening on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We sure appreciate that as well. And uh, consider becoming a patron so we help to get uh, all the, the great interviews and content that we have for you. And then uh, we also have our merch store, which has a special uh, I Survived Countdown to Christmas design right now by artist Jessica Miller. So definitely you want to check that out. And thanks again to Sarah. And we'll talk to you all later. Bye.